Scroll Staff Share Tweet Email Reddit Print Share Tweet Email Reddit Print International News by Scroll Staff Published November 28, 2017 12.36 p.m. Television footage of a North Korean missile launch. In August Young Yeonji Hawaii is set to reinstate a World War E-style missile warning system from December 1st amid fears of a nuclear attack by North Korea, Reuters reported. The warning sirens have not been used in the last 30 years, since the Cold War. The air siren will for 60 seconds from around 400 locations across the islands, and will be repeated on the first working day of each month, officials said. Public service announcements in Hawaii will urge the residents to get inside, stay inside and stay tuned if they hear the warning. Emergency preparedness is knowing what to expect and what to do for all hazards, Hawaii Emergency Management Agency Chief Vern Miyagi said, but did not specifically mention North Korea. The sirens are being reactivated in light of the recent test launches of intercontinental ballistic missiles from North Korea, which may reach the state, said Hawaii Emergency Management Agency spokesperson Arlena Agbayani. A single 150 kiloton weapon detonated over Pearl Harbor on the main island of Oahu would be expected to kill 18,000 people outright, and leave 50,000 to 1, 20,000 others injured, said another spokesperson of the agency, Richard Raposa. United States President Donald Trump has warned North Korea a number of times against boosting its nuclear weapons program this year. In July, Pyongyang twice launched a long-range missile that could potentially reach the U.S. mainland. In September, it conducted its sixth and most powerful atomic bomb test yet. We welcome your comments at letters at scroll.in. Hawaii World War II Cold War North Korea Nuclear Threat Sponsored Content by Published November 22, 2017 0352 p.m. Shutter Shock Share Tweet Email Reddit Print Share Tweet Email Reddit Print Twa Wheelers are the lifeline of urban Asia, where they account for more than half of the vehicles owned in some countries. This trend is amply evident in India, where sales in the subcategory of mopeds alone rose 23% in 201,617. In fact, one survey estimates that today one in every three Indian households owns a twa-wheeler. What explains the enduring popularity of twa-wheelers? In one of the fastest-growing economies in the world, twa-wheeler ownership is a practical aspiration in small towns and rural areas, and a tactic to deal with choked roads in the bigger cities. Twa-wheelers have also allowed more women to commute independently with the advent of gearless scooters and mopeds. Together, these factors have led to phenomenal growth in overall twa-wheeler sales, which rose by 27.5% in the past five years, according to the Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers Siam. Indeed, the ICE 2016-360 survey says that twa-wheelers are used by 37% of metropolitan commuters to reach work, and are owned by half the households in India's bigger cities and developed rural areas. Amid this exponential growth, experts have cautioned about Huawei's role in compounding the impact of pollution. Largely ignored in measures to control vehicular pollution, experts say Huawei's too need to be brought in the ambit of pollution control as they contribute across most factors determining vehicular pollution engine technology, total number of vehicles, structure and age of vehicles and fuel quality. In fact, in major Indian cities, two-thirds of pollution load is due to Huawei's. They give out 30% of the particulate matter load, 10 percentage points more than the contribution from cars. Additionally, 75% 80% of the twa wheelers on the roads in some of the Asian cities have twa stroke engines which are more polluting. The Bharat Stage BS emissions standards are set by the Indian government to regulate pollutants emitted by vehicles fitted with combustion engines. In April 2017, India's ban of BS3 certified vehicles in favor of the higher BS IV emission standards came into effect. By April 2020, India aims to leapfrog to the BSV standards, being a signatory to Conference of Parties Protocol on Combating Climate Change. Over and above the BSV norms target, the Energy Department has shown a clear commitment to move to an electric-only future for automobiles by 2030 with the announcement of the FAME scheme faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles in India. The struggles of on-ground execution, though, remain Herculean for automakers who are scrambling to upgrade engine technology in time to meet the deadlines for the next BS norms update. As compliance with BSV would require changes in the engine system itself, it is being seen as one of the most mammoth road projects undertaken by the Indian automotive industry in recent times. Relative to BSIV, BSV norms mandate a reduction of particulate matter by 82% and of oxides of nitrogen NOx by 68%. Emission control in fuel-based twa-wheelers can be tackled on several fronts. 
Amongst post-emission solutions, catalytic converters are highly effective. Catalytic converters transform exhaust emissions into less harmful compounds. They can be especially effective in removing hydrocarbons, nitrous oxides and carbon monoxide from the exhaust. At the engine level itself, engine oil additives are helpful in reducing emissions. Anti-wear additives, friction modifiers, high-performance fuel additives and more lead to better performance, improved combustion and a longer engine life. The improvement in the engine's efficiency as a result directly correlates to lesser emissions over time. Fuel economy of a vehicle is yet another factor that helps determine emissions. It can be optimized by light weighting, which lessens fuel consumption itself. Light weighting a vehicle by 10 pounds can result in a 10-15 pound reduction of carbon dioxide emissions each year. Polymer systems that can bear a lot of stress have emerged as reliable replacements for metals in automotive construction. BASF, the pioneer of the first catalytic converter for automobiles, has been at the forefront of developing technology to help automakers comply with advancing emission norms while retaining vehicle performance and cost efficiency. Its new state-of-the-art manufacturing facility at Mahindra World City near Chennai is equipped to develop a range of catalysts for diverse requirements, from high-performance and recreational bikes to economy-oriented basic transportation. BASF also leverages its additives expertise to provide compounded lubricant solutions, such as antioxidants, anti-wear additives and corrosion inhibitors and more. At the manufacturing level, BASF's road in engineered material systems has led to the development of innovative materials that are much lighter than metals, yet just as durable and strong. These can be used to manufacture mirror brackets, intake pipes, step holders, clutch covers, etc. With innovative solutions on all fronts of automobile production, BASF has been successfully collaborating with various companies in making their vehicles emission compliant in the most cost-effective way. You can read more about BASF's innovations in two-wheeler emission control here, lubricant solutions here and light weighting solutions here. This article was provided by the Scroll Marketing Team on behalf of BASF and not by the Scroll Editorial Team.